Hello everybody, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren if you're new here and if you're not new, welcome back. I made myself a little coffee. Actually, I just poured it into this cup. This is a La Cologne cold brew. You probably don't care. This is not a vlog. Okay, if you're new here, I have a five-month-old golden retriever puppy named Rocco. Rocco, come here. I am going to try to get him to cooperate in this video, but no promises because look at you. You're crazy Maybe I'll just zoom you out so you can see what's going on around me because it's craziness as always Um, but yeah, I asked you guys on my Instagram to ask me some questions that you guys have been wondering about puppy training Like everything puppy related. So I'm finally sitting down and doing this video for you. I have so many requests so I have all the questions on my phone. I haven't even gone through them yet, so I'm kind of just gonna go through and very randomly answer some questions that you guys asked. But yeah, just a little general overview. Um, I have a five-month-old golden retriever. I got him in January, at the end of January, and I've had him since he was eight weeks old. Um, and his name is Rocco. Rocco Taco. Basically just Taco. <laughs> okay, first question that I got so many times. How I trained a puppy in an apartment. This can be such a long freaking answer, but I'm just gonna tell you like it's not as hard as it looks um, I am very grateful that I'm on the first floor first of all I'm in a very dog friendly um, complex so basically like every single person I've ever met here has a dog there are grass areas all around there is a huge open grass area very very close to me there's so many walking paths like just because he doesn't have an actual yard like a backyard or front yard to run around in he does have so much space to run around and go on walks and stuff when I'm able to take him um, if you are raising a puppy in an apartment you can get through it it's honestly not that bad I'm gonna be honest it might be a little bit harder when he gets bigger and needs more space and just has a lot more energy but as of right now since he's still pretty small I have the ability to just take him out and he can get all his energy out pretty quickly outside so that's really nice I'll get more into like potty training in an apartment and stuff a little later on if a question like that comes up because that's a whole whole other situation <laughs> how to convince family if you are still living at home with your parents or your family and they're saying no I was there okay when I still lived at home before I moved out on my own all I wanted was a golden retriever puppy but my dad wouldn't let me because of the simple fact that he's allergic to pet hair um so the two dogs we had there were hypoallergenic so they didn't shed at all and golden retrievers shed a lot so in the end I kind of was very understanding because it's not that he didn't want me to have a dog it's more so that he couldn't have it because of the hair but the time will come when the time will come honestly if your parents aren't supportive of it right now there will be a day when you are very independent and you are able to make the decision on your own you have the money to financially take care of a puppy you have the time to take care of a puppy of the space the time will come the time will come there's a reason that they don't want you to if they're saying no just try to be respectful of that and get one when the time is right because now thinking back if I were to have gotten one when my dad was actually saying no and like you don't have time for a puppy I honestly did not have time for a puppy and I don't know why I thought I did so they know what's best for you <laughs> what weren't you expecting when getting a puppy so uh, I'm just I'm just gonna kind of group this together with like the hardest part about puppy life so far I honestly think it was the biting stage if you guys follow me on Instagram, you probably saw all of these stories that I posted of me legit crying in the other room because I was so frustrated. I think when he was around like two to three months, his teething and biting was literally so bad. I couldn't walk around the house without him attached to my pants, ripping holes in them. Like he would not let me walk without him literally biting my legs. Like it was horrible. Um, playtime was also like horrible because he would just leave my hands so so cut up. He obviously didn't mean to. He's not being vicious. He was just being a puppy and wanting to teeth and stuff like that. And he would very much rather have my living blood in my flesh than his chew toys, obviously. So going along with that, I'm going to give you some like biting tips, I guess. A lot of people say, like, just redirect them. Don't say no. Like, all that stuff. Just put a toy in their mouth and they'll be fine. Like, no. That did not work at all for me. Zero percent. I would not recommend that. I mean, obviously try it at first because it might work for you and your puppy, but it did not work for Rocco. He was just, he did not want toys at all. I think the biggest thing was just like, for me, what finally, finally got him to kind of chill out was one, he got a little bit older. It like just comes with time, I guess. That's like the main thing that you have to wait for. But also when he was getting really, really, really rowdy, I would
wouldn't put him in his crate because I didn't want to associate that with being like time out. I personally would leave the room. I would go in my room, close the door, leave him out here and just have him like chill out because he just needed time to like relax and breathe a little and I also needed time to relax and breathe a little. <laughs> so just giving each other a break for a little bit really really helped me and I think that's what finally led him to realize like oh when I do this she leaves the room she doesn't want to play with me and that was legit. <laughs> no. He's trying to drink my coffee. Since he's getting bigger, will you stop using the crate? Okay, so this is a whole another thing. Crates. I did crate train him. I still am crate training him, which means I put him in there at night. He slept in there at night. He did not sleep with me in my bed. He didn't sleep out in the house anywhere. He slept in his crate every single night. Still does. Um, he would also go in there when I leave the house. He would go in there to eat and basically do a lot of things in his crate. The way I did that was like I just really stuck to it. I didn't let myself cuddle with him at night even though it was very tempting to like keep him in my bed at night. Crate training is not easy. He loves this toy and it is the loudest toy in the world. Sorry. I'm sorry you can't have it right now. Here, you want your bone? Um, crate training, like I said, not easy. Okay, the first week that I had him, which gladly it only lasted a week, but he would not sleep at night. He would wake up so many times. He just did not want to go to sleep. He would whine and cry and bark when I left him in his crate, when I left the house. Like, it was rough for the first week. And then one time, randomly, actually the first time I went up and visited my boyfriend Keikoa and stayed up there, um, like an hour away, he slept through the night. Just so randomly. And I was like, oh my gosh, did he just sleep through the night or did I sleep through his cries? But he slept through the night and it was so random. I don't know what I don't know what it is but he just got used to it I guess um so to answer your question see he's getting rowdy right now because I'm not paying attention to him I don't think I'm gonna be buying like a bigger crate so once he does grow out of this one I think it'll also be around the time where he doesn't really need it anymore he's already starting to be like fine without his crate like I can trust him and he's also fully potty trained now so that's a huge thing but yeah once he's bigger like bigger bigger I don't think he'll be using a crate anymore um, just because, I don't know, I don't see myself buying a new one. I don't know, that's just me. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll change my mind. I don't know. I'm still a new puppy mom, okay? What is the monthly cost of having a puppy? So, having a puppy is a lot of money if you let it be. I mean, I have pet insurance for him, so that's one thing. It's like $60 a month. I literally have to hide this thing. I'm sorry. Here, here, get your bunker boy. He doesn't want it just wants his sriracha boy and then I also send him to daycare I'm gonna say like once a week so that's like $40 a week so just those two things alone add up so much pet food the bag that I buy is like $50 and it lasts I would say like two to three weeks and then that's just aside from all the other random things that I buy him like new toys and subscription boxes I have bark box for him which is another $20 a month now that I'm sitting here thinking about it like wow he's an expensive dog but obviously you don't need these things for him um it's just to like optimize his life I guess like he doesn't need a bark box he doesn't need pet insurance per se that just means if there is an emergency you'll have to pay more at an actual vet so it just all comes together and ends up being a lot more money than you probably expected I didn't expect it to be this much money but luckily I'm financially able to do it, so that's good. How much was he? I'm gonna answer this because I wanna be transparent. Um, Golden Retrievers are one of the most expensive dogs in the world. I paid $3,500 for Rocco. Why did you want a golden? I don't really have an exact answer for you. I've literally just always wanted a golden retriever. I've never wanted any other dog. I mean, I do want some other dogs, but I knew I wanted a golden retriever first. So that's really just the answer. They're the cutest dogs ever to me, and they're so loyal and so sweet and so family-oriented and family-friendly, and they love kids, which obviously I'm going to have kids one day, so... I need my dog to, you know, love them. But yeah, it's just a bunch of things that, I mean, everyone knows golden retrievers are one of the best types of dogs. The most loyal, sweetest, like, cuddliest, playful dogs ever. Huh, Rocco? How big do you think he will get? So he's already huge. He's like almost 40 pounds, I think, and he's only five months old. And his dad was 95 pounds. His mom was a little smaller, I think like 70 or 60, something like that. So he's definitely going to be more like his dad. He was one of the biggest ones in the litter. So I'm expecting him to be pretty large, which I'm okay with. You see right now, I'm not paying attention and he is chewing on my fingers, which he knows he's not supposed to do. Do you think you'll move to another apartment with more space for Rocco? So my next plan, once I move in with Keikoa, after we're married, is to at least rent a house that has a yard so he can run around in. He's choosing the loudest toys to play with right now, and I can't take it. Choco boy. Go get your ball. Go get your ball. Rocco, go get your ball. Go get your ball. Where's your ball? Mm. Go get your... Okay, <laughs> wait. Wait. Good boy, he waited. Where'd you get your ball? Okay. 
now maybe he'll play some fetch did you train him to tell you he needs to go potty or do you just know so now um he sits by the door by the front door because he knows i take him out there and he will just wait there until i see him until i take him out he literally sits there staring at the door handle until i see him so that's how he tells me now what was the process of getting rocco i was not like a hundred percent getting a dog i didn't even know i was going to get a dog literally the day before i got him so randomly my friend reached out and he was like so i know this family that has golden retriever puppies and i was like oh my gosh how much are they and are there still any available because if you know you know like getting golden retriever puppies is so hard they're literally sold out or like on wait list for years before they're even born which is insane but luckily this family isn't a legit like breeder they kind of just had puppies so that's how it kind of worked and the day i found out that i reached out to her went to go see them met rocco and then the next day they were available and i went to go pick him up so it was a very very quick process sit sit you're not getting it till you sit what's rocco's favorite toy this thing I bought this sriracha bottle at Target and it was the biggest mistake ever because it is the loudest squeaker I've ever heard in my entire life and he loves squeaking it when he's not supposed to. Yeah, he loves that. He honestly loves all his toys. He loves getting new toys though, like his BarkBox toys. He will be so excited for them and he will use every single one that he gets. Like he just switches off back and forth. Like he loves literally all of his toys. But squeaky toys are definitely his favorite and then also like the crinkly ones like this. He's literally a baby. Would you like to have another one? Yes, but not right now. Okay, Koa is already talking about it. He's like trying to convince me to get another one. Like, Rocco's so lonely when we leave. Like, he needs a friend. I'm like, yeah, but not now. My plan, have a kid first and then get another dog. We're probably gonna get a Bernese Mountain Dog for second dog or another Golden Retriever. I don't know, but definitely not soon. But yes, I do want more dogs in the future. Favorite food and treats. So right now he loves carrots so much. He honestly, I can't even tell you his favorite food because he eats legit anything on the floor like anything he sees even if it's not food he will eat it and he will slurp it up with his tongue and swallow it so that's also another hardest part about having him is he will literally be a vacuum cleaner and just eat anything so it's very difficult a couple minutes ago before i filmed this video i found him on my bed chewing on a safety pin so but he does love baby carrots so much and apples how was the vaccination process for him so he came with his first set of at-home vaccination shots which isn't like a legit thing that a lot of vets like approve to be their first round so once i got him i signed him up with a vet right away and took him there to get what i thought was going to be his second round because i thought the first round would count but they were like no it's an at-home thing and it's not like approved by a vet so we have to like basically restart when i was very 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 upset about that i shared that on my story once it happened but yeah it was just not a fun process um and then later on they were kind of just like okay we're kind of we're gonna count the first set now so he only needs one more set so i was like okay so then i finally got them it felt like it took forever for him to get all the shots because i could not wait to get him out of this apartment and on walks and stuff because you're not supposed to take them on walks until at least their second round of shots um and then until they get like their rabies shots and stuff so it was very difficult it felt like the longest time ever but once it finally happened it was perfect. He's under the couch. What are you doing? You never do this. What is he doing? Rocco. Whatever, I'm just gonna let him do what he's doing. How did you crate train? I basically, like I said before, put him in there at night. I would take him out every few hours to go to the bathroom. I put him in there when I leave the house for a little bit, like no more than like an hour at a time for the first like few months that I had him because he couldn't be in there for that long without having to pee i also feed him his meals in his crate still like he still knows once i have his bowl full of food he will book it to his crate and just sit there and wait for me to do give it to him so i think like all that and like training inside of his crate you're supposed to like give him treats when he's in his crate and do the fun like training activities teach him tricks and stuff while he's in his crate so he can associate being being in his crate with the what in the world are you doing? So you can associate being in his crate with all good things. And that's honestly what worked out for me. He's perfectly fine in his crate now. Like he knows it's his safe space and he does go in there voluntarily now for naps, which I never thought he would do. I think he heard me say crate, so he's trying to go in his crate. <laughs> does he have separation anxiety when you leave the house and how do you manage it? He used to have very bad separation anxiety. I have a ring doorbell camera that's on him. He would literally bark for an hour straight after I left, but now he's fine. Um, I kind of just had to 
let him do it and get used to it. That's really the only thing you can do. So yeah. How do you keep up with his shedding around the house? So luckily he is a short haired golden retriever. Like both of his parents are short haired and they tend to shed less than long haired golden retrievers, but he still does shed so much. So I invested in a Dyson like animal vacuum so that has been the best thing ever it sucks up so much of his hair um but other than that always keeping a lint roller on hand and in reach like there's really just nothing else you can do about it let's get into potty training because that's another huge thing that so many people want to know so potty training him was definitely very hard also a little backstory my boyfriend kikoa is in the fire academy so we're kind of like long distance right now me and rocco drive up to see him on the weekends we would take everything like all of rocco's things up there um to help with potty training and everything so that also made it a lot harder, I think, and just like the lack of consistency for Rocco, but he's fine now. He got used to it. So I started out with pee pads, um, like in here in the house, and I would have a little pen that would like close him in. I hope that's not too loud, but like I literally can't get him to stop. So I would take him out at night um, whenever he would wake up and cry, which would literally be like every two hours. I would wake up like five times throughout the night to take him to the bathroom, and what I would do is just take him out of his crate, put him in a little pen closed off area on the pee pads, and then wait till he goes and. And once he goes, pick him up, put him right back in his crate, and let him go back to sleep. And that's what happened through the night. Throughout the day, I would also like kind of sense when he kind of had to go. Like he would kind of just be like sniffing around a little bit, and like you could just tell he needed to go. So I would pick him up right away, put him in his little area, wait till he went, and then give him a treat. Treat every time is something that really, really helped him also, and helps I think every dog is like food motivation, especially for him. So yeah, I would do that, and just being consistent with it, just always being aware of him and what he's doing and all that so you don't catch any accidents that are happening but yeah it definitely is hard i'm not saying he didn't have any accidents there are many times i've had to wash my sheets because he peed on my bed or clean the carpet because he peed on the carpet swiffer the floor because he peed on the floor like it happens he's a puppy he doesn't have the best most controlled bladder in the world but he is fine now he's fully potty trained now so after i used the pee pads i switched over to something called a doggy lawn i saw it randomly on instagram and i was like wow i really need that it's meant for like apartment living so it's basically a real patch of grass that you put on like on your balcony or your patio or whatever or even in your house and train them to go on the grass before they're like fully vaccinated because before he didn't have all of his shots I couldn't take him outside onto the big grass area to go pee because that's where everyone else pees and poops so it was really hard so the doggy lawn definitely helped for a long time um, until he got all the shots then I started taking him outside and just being consistent with it like he just had to learn that he had to start going outside so like I said now he sits at the front door and just waits for me to take him out. But yeah, that's basically his potty training story. Just giving them treats every single time after they go pee or poop. Personally, whenever I put him down to go to the bathroom, I would say something like, potty, potty, go potty, go potty. Like having a word to associate with them and going to the bathroom. Very helpful because then they learn that word and they know like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And then also just with consistency, whenever I would go visit Keikoa, I ordered another grass patch for up there. So he knew that's where he had to go so it was never like a big change for him because everything I had here I also had up there I even ordered him another crate to go at Keiko's house up there so he just always had consistency pretty much even though he was in a new space like he knew his what his crate was and what it meant he knew the grass patch and what it meant what are some of the hidden or unexpected costs although I have pet insurance for him there's only a certain like deductible amount that I can actually use from it so I didn't really know how that worked honestly until I was in the thick of it and had to take him to the vet um, this one time where he got stung by a bee. He ate a bee and his eyes swelled up and he was totally out of it. Like it was very scary. It was at my sister's house when it happened and I was at school. And she was texting me and she was like, I don't know if you want to take him to the vet. So I didn't know what was happening. She didn't know either. And no one knew that he actually got stung by a bee. We kind of knew that he just ate something. So I finally took him to the vet. That was a very expensive vet trip. Um, just for them to tell me like, oh yeah, he's allergic to bees. Like give him some Benadryl. So they gave him Benadryl. They gave me a bunch of medicines to take home which costed a lot of extra money too and I didn't even end up using any of that stuff because he got better before I even needed to so yeah that was a very unexpected vet cost definitely best camera to use to check on them when you're gone I personally just use a ring indoor camera and it's you can listen to the microphone on it and you can also speak through it I personally don't speak through it because then he would know that I'm watching him and like that he can like get my attention with it so I just use it to look at him and like listen to see if he's barking or not. I'll have a link below.
below um, everything I'm talking about like product wise I'll link below what tricks can he do and can we see him do them yes I'll insert a little video right here that I'll probably take after while he's not like super crazy but I'll show you everything that he can do it's kind of just all come with time like I've kind of just taught him one thing at a time and he learns so fast so that's nice okay sit good boy paw good boy Rocko down Good boy. Sit. Sit. Spin. Sit. Pa. Okay, wait. 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 Get it, good boy. Is he sociable with other dogs? Yes, he is. I tried to get him social with other dogs as young as I could so that he could get used to other dogs. Um, we go on walks so many times throughout the day and there's, like I said before, there's so many dogs around here. He gets to play with them every single day and also I send him to puppy daycare every week, like once a week. So it's not so I can get things done and like that I need a break from him. It's literally just because I want him to be able to play with other dogs and get used to hanging out with other dogs. So yeah, he's very social with other dogs. He is definitely used to other dogs and loves playing with them. We also take him to the dog park on the weekends and dog beach. Like, he loves other dogs for sure. And specifically golden retrievers. Apparently, like, he loves playing with other golden retrievers and he's, like, automatically attracted to them more, which is interesting. Like, he knows they're his breed, but yeah. Um, a lot of people were also asking about the doggy daycare that I sent him to. So it's just like a local place. There's only one location. It's so nice. Like the people there are literally the nicest people ever. They have an Instagram where they post constant pictures of all the dogs that are there for the day and videos. So you can always see like what your dog's up to throughout the day. And like you always get at least one picture of your dog through their Instagram stories, which is so nice. Um, the first day I sent him there, it was free. They just wanted to like check his temperament and see if it was really a good fit for him. They sent a report card for the first day, like of what he did and who he played with. That's when he, they first introduced me to his girlfriend Layla and said that they played all day together. He's another golden retriever puppy. Yeah, so I love his daycare so far. They also have boarding, but obviously I haven't used that or I don't really plan on using it. I don't know if I'm gonna need to one day, but that's nice because then he'll like already know the people there and like the owners and other dogs and stuff. But yeah, it's just been a good experience for me overall. No bad experiences there. <laughs> How do you manage between school, puppy, and social life? This is also another huge thing. Um, I think the one thing that has really helped me since I'm doing majority online school. Is he sitting by the door? <laughs> I think he's fine for a little bit but the one thing is when I have an online class or when I have a zoom class when I have some homework to do when I have a video to edit or film I always take him on a really long walk right before so that he'll come back and be tired because if not he will just be crazy and want me to be playing with him kind of like he is now just tiring him out before everything that I need to do has really helped do you regret not waiting to get Rocco until after college no definitely not I knew this was the right time because I have been so lonely living by myself ever since I moved out Rocco has been the best thing to me because he keeps me company and he's just the best the best little friend that I could ever have here and it is definitely a perfect timing even though I'm in college it's online school right now so I still have a lot of time to give to him which is nice um but yeah so no I don't regret it at all what are you doing he's hitting the blinds what are all of your nicknames for Rocco oh gosh this list goes on and on I'm only gonna name a few that I call him all the time so Rocco Rocco taco taco Rito taco Rito boy Rocco boy mr. droopy lips taco boy and the list goes on but those are the main ones you go potty okay he really needs to go outside BRB. Okay, we're back. He definitely had to go. So, Agorito can't have that. Who does your dog like more, you or your boyfriend? Kikoa likes to say Rocco loves him more, but it's just because he gets literally so excited every time he comes on the weekend. He will literally pee out of excitement. Um, but that's just because he doesn't see him all the time, right? No, just kidding. He actually loves us both, like, a lot, you can tell. Even though he only sees him on the weekends, but, like, Keiko gives him, like, his full attention. So, the sriracha toy is between my legs, and he's trying to get it, so I apologize. So, yeah, I think that's all the questions that I'm going to be answering. I do want to do a whole separate video on his favorite, or, like, my favorite puppy products, things I love that I bought, and just, like, all of his favorite toys and just 
everything puppy related because I definitely think that could be so helpful for new puppy owners. So I'm definitely going to be doing that video separately. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you for watching and thank you for waiting for this video. I finally was able to film it, finally getting some time. But yeah, we are both very appreciative of you and watching this video and asking me all the questions. If you have any more questions that I didn't answer, please leave them down below in the comments and I'll be sure to get to them. I'll try my best. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Make sure you follow us both on Instagram. Lauren Doan and Golden Boy Rocco on Instagram for updates on there. Subscribe if you have not already. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next video. <laughs> ah, bye bye.